What's going on, creative? So in the last video, I showed the process for developing a app with no code tools. In this video, I'm going to actually go walk through how to build an app. And this walkthrough is really comes from this point that I came in with Bolt and created six different apps because I wanted to practice to make sure that the process that I gave you it actually works. So if we go through and we look at the different type of applications we have, we have the wine app. This is the one we're going to really walk through. We have a frame IQ app that basically takes a video, analyzes the video, and then extracts frames from the videos and gives the transcripts. There's some issues with this particular app that I have to work through. We have my tier tool app that uh, we can go through. But the only thing I did add was I wanted different categories for tools. So I added that in and I can just go through and kind of do that and even change the, the, uh, the category to mix back and forth. So I, I, I like the way that is. And I can still save, load, the reset, manage, and change the name of it if I wanted to. So all of those things still apply. The task manager app that I showed you guys before. All right. And let's take a look at the process. We have the PRD. We have designed the database. We have mockup, front end, back end, replace, enable CRUD, test. So let's see how I actually did this. First things first, ChatGPT. So with ChatGPT, what I have is a project. So my app creation project, and you can see I've used this for different occasions for different projects. But in my knowledge bank is the steps that I shared with you in the previous video. So what, what is a PRD? What to do with the back end? What does the mockup data look like? All of that information is here. So when I get ready to start with the log line logging app, you can see here that I simply come in and I gave it this image as inspiration for color scheme and a basic prompt. The nine noble grapes, 20 of the top wine producing regions, and I want authentication. And then said, write the PRD. And then we get our noble wine checker. So it has an overview, comes up with the core features, comes with the UI. Here's the front end, the home page, wine logging page, statistics. And then it came here with the back end. It has the database schema, what the wines look like. We have the wines, we have grade types, we have region. And here it has user optional. Now I said I want authentication and my PRD says user optional. So you'll see in my next prompt here, and this is just kind of getting into some more details. With my next prompt, I tell it, we are going to use authentication, create the database schema. Okay. And now we created the schema with the user. So we get user authentication, email, password, name. ID. We get the wines, we get the grapes, and here it is pre-populating the field with the grapes. We get regions pre-populating the field with the regions. And I did like this. It came up with the primary and foreign keys, the field types. We need to make sure that this is correct. When I said on the previous video on the process, Spending time on the front end saves you a lot of time before you go to Bolt. Making sure your PRD is right. Is this the right information? Does this represent the app that you want? Take a few minutes to read this over to make sure it's what you want. The details, the database, is this the right database? If it's not, you're going to spend a lot of time going back and forth and wasting tokens. So we have all of that. So now it's time to go over to Bolt. 
and going over to Bolt essentially is this. The very first prompt is giving it the PRD, giving it the database design. And from that PRD, from that database design, it now needs to come up with the phases. And you can see here that it came up with the phases, um, basic setup, authentication, the database setup. Then we started looking at the core features. We started looking at statistics and visualization, polishing, and testing the rules that it gave me. So here's the database. So it knew right away the structure in which we needed to have the information. So right here, just based on this, it kind of knows what is logging. What is it looking for in the log? What is it looking for for a user? So this is the reason why we do this. We give this information. So with the very first prompt, and I also gave it the image for color inspiration. That's why I was able to come up with this color scheme. This was the very first prompt I got back from, from Bolt. We got the log wise. We didn't have the all wise that came later, but we have log, we have statistics, logging the wine, and essentially it's just looking at the database. What did we, what in the database did we say we want to collect? And here's the information that it collected. So if we come in and we said, I think we're going to go with a nice, let's go with a nice Brit. Uh, we will we'll call it a, let's go with a Grenache Australia. Let's give it like 12.5. I've just been putting in 10, 15, 2022 and 12. All right. Let's, let's just give it a three. And okay. And then we log it. Okay. So now that it's logged, if we come over to statistics, you can see I have two Grenache. Uh, I have two Ys from this region. I have two Ys from Mosul. And so it's tracking it nicely. If we come over here to show filters, we can do a Chardonnay and Grenache. If I just want to see, okay, I have a Chardonnay and I have a Riesling. Okay, so those are my white wines, Cabernet, Shiraz, Grenache. Okay, if we click on that, we get a we get grape type, we get, all right. So those are the filtering, and then we have all wines, and come in here. Now, the issue th then is this is the database, all right? So how do we implement the database? In the last video, I told you that I like to manually do the database. So now that we have our schema, this is what I did. I gave the schema to OpenAI and I told it to create the SQL instructions. Mm -hmm. So if you come here, you can see we create the user tables, create the wine table, create the grape table. So we're creating the tables and then we insert this. So we take all of these instructions and we come over to, we come over to Superbase and we come into SQL editor and we paste that into SQL editor and then click run. Click run, and then we can go and check to make sure that the tables were created. So you can see we have our grapes table, the regions table, and the whites. Okay. So that is essentially doing that. And now once these tables are set up, what makes this easier is that we just come over here to project settings and go to the API and copy our URL and anonymous key. We copy those two, we come over to Bolt, we give it to Bolt, and Bolt will then populate your environment. 
And so now we have that information there. Once it has that, it knows to integrate all of the, all of the tables into our, our app. And it was easy because when, when it created, when it wrote, when it actually wrote the, the code, it was taken to account this table. This was a smooth operation. I had no problems with Bolt connecting with Superbase doing it like this. And I think that to me is just, for, from my point of view, I think it's just an easier way to do it. Okay, so once we have the database in place, then all of this became easy. The only thing that was really a challenge was that under the recent winds, it had this little thing here. So you can see that I even gave it the code, this SVG file, I wanted to get rid of it. And it didn't work that time. I came back again and said, this is what it is. It wasn't able to do it. Didn't realize what I was talking about. And then I actually even drew it because they put that hamburger menu up here and it had here. So this was working and this wasn't, and I didn't like that. So I had to do it again. And finally I went into Photoshop and I did this all wise here at this, remove this, that worked. But overall, once that was done, we were ready to go. And the only thing I had to do was deploy it. Now, the first time I did it, I clicked deploy and it put it here. The only thing is, is that as you saw, I'm on Vercel and I want to keep all of my projects on Vercel. So how do I get this to Vercel? There's a couple of ways and it's with the export. So when deploying from Bolt, we have a couple of options. We can just hit deploy. So if you're using Netify, then you just click deploy and you can go through all the different integrations there. But I use Vercel, so I am, I can go download, unzip it, do the imports and everything like that and just update it to install it to GitHub. Or what I found is easier, if you open in Stack Blitz here, you can then create a repository. So you have to connect your GitHub to StackBlitz. Not that difficult to do, but you just come in, make it private, click create repository. It's going to do that. Go to leave. It'll go through the motions there. And then when I go over to, when I go here and I want to add it, I can simply come over to add new projects and it's here. We can do import. If I have my, I, I'm just going to keep that. If you have some open AI, Gemini or anything like that, you need to put your API keys here. So your environmental variables, you put those here. Now with Superbase, I don't have to do that, but hit deploy and it's going to go through the process, build out everything and deploy the app. Now, the only thing with first sale is that it's not commercial. I'm on the free tier, so it's not commercial. If you're going to sell something, connect this to Stripe, you then have to upgrade to the paid $20 a month version or take it over to AWS Amplify. All right. So continue the dashboard and it's deployed. And this is the reason why I use for sale because this is so easy. Uh, all right. That's the entire process of going from, of going from idea to deployment. And again, if we look at this, if we take kind of, if we take a look and see what we did here, this was all done in ChatGPT. So, so this was done in ChatGPT. 
then we went to our front end and back end. And again, it wasn't a lot of back and forth because total, it was four hours to do this, to do this. Now, because the way I did the database and Superbase, I did not have to do this. Then it was a matter of testing it, making sure it worked, and then deploy it to Vercel. Total time, this entire process took four hours. Good. The amount of Let's go here to bolt. If we go over to settings, tokens, you can see here. So for 4.6 uh, million tokens that I've used, it took 1 million to do this app. So 1 million tokens to do this app. Spend some time on the PRD and the database. Spend some time there. If you have any issues with the APIs, spend some time with the API keys. I've noticed that when I run into issues, it's because of the API or it's because of the database. That's when I run into issues. So if you can get those ironed out as much as possible before you get started, this process is so much easier, okay? All right, so hopefully that helps. You guys keep creating and we will see you in another video.